Um, fuck. Neuronymous. Hey, boys and girls, this is Hal with another episode of Neuronymous. It has been a really, really rough and traumatic and shitty week and a half, uh, or even two weeks since we I last talked. I don't. I I honestly I've lost track of the as far as the last time I spoke to you guys, but um. I, uh, excuse me, so we, uh, the dogs are gone, so that's, uh, extremely bittersweet, um, I grew very, there was a, uh, a puppy party, you know, to uh, get all the dogs adopted, the rest of them, there were like five left, and, um, three of them got taken, as I had mentioned, and two of them were traumatized and left behind and we had to take them home and they were hiding underneath they by the time we got them home in their kennel they were burrowed underneath a blanket scared to shit because everything has just been torn apart and ripped apart ripped from them i mean that's always fun right that's always a cool thing um so we had them for two uh for another well for another week uh, we and then we and you know it was it's weird because those two dogs the, the the puppies that were remaining were ones they never really were attached to, but you take away all that extra stuff all the the the, the background all the other dogs, and you get really really attached to them, and uh, I got really attached to um, Astrid, who is now Storm. She's been renamed Storm by a, a wonderful family. And uh, and then there was Hiccup, who is now... I don't remember what his name is now, but the, it doesn't matter. He's been taken by a good family. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was... It was rough. It was very emotional because, you know, when you, when you have the two dogs rather than eight dogs... You grow really attached to them very quickly, and that was extremely hard. And I was crying. I was very emotional. I'm not going to cry here because I, I think I, I'm pretty sure I have cried myself, you know, to death at this point. Um, so yeah, loss is a shitty thing. You lose things, and and when you lose them, sometimes you don't get them back. And we're not going to get these dogs back. Uh, I don't know if we're going to. I don't know if I'm going to ever do this again. Uh, it's very traumatic for me, is and and my wife is I think wants to do it on the stipulation that we don't have as many, and and I get that, I totally get that, I'm I'm cool with it, um, you know if it's like a litter of two or three, maybe even four, I'd be down with it, but eight, no, 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 sir, no, ma'am, not happening again, fuck that, um, you know, um, but it's made me want a dog <laughs> well, uh, you know like I, 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 I really want to adopt a dog one that's might actually get along with our crazy psycho beast Jasper um, that'd be kind of cool um, and I was really happy with I've been really pleased with Jasper's behavior the last uh, he's our dog he's a Shih Tzu Bichon mix very neurotic he was abused when we first got you know, before we got him and he thinks everybody's out to kill us. And he is extremely protective of us. If anybody comes over, if anybody if he sees anybody, uh, if we're walking him, he just thinks that they're going to murder us. And, you know, I'm not ruling it out. I mean, it's possible somebody could murder me when I'm walking the dog. Or, you know, if somebody comes over, that you know, you never know what's in a, in a, in a man or a woman's heart. They could, they could have murder in their heart. I don't know. Maybe Jasper sees something that I don't or that Amanda doesn't. I don't know. But anyway. Um, but yeah, so... Um, and then yesterday, on t- if we're, ta- we're going to continue down the ro- 
you know the 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 uh, topic of loss. Well, my car, my 2006 Subaru Impreza, uh, R.I.P. Man, rest in peace. Because I got it to my shrink's office, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, and <laughs> and yeah, uh, I I got there, and then when I was leaving. I started it, couldn't, well, I, actually, I couldn't start it, uh, and I had to have my, my bestie, Stacy, uh, who's been on the show before, uh, come by and jump it. And then, to make matters worse, uh, I, the car would not go above five miles per hour, and it was herking and jerking, and, and I, essentially, it became, I, I felt like I was in a funeral procession, like, honestly, and I was, and I was the dead guy. I was dead, and uh, I was and I was driving the hearse at the same time. Like there were so many angry drivers behind me. Uh, Stacy took the brunt of the abuse because she was going slow, because she was following me home. So you know, I and I had my emergency lights on, but you know, we we you know as as you should. Uh, when I got home, I left the car running for about a good hour, and I went after an hour. I decided to see how it went, take it a around the block and sure enough still still fucked no good it's fucked up car's gone so now the question begs what do we do next do we get a new car or do we get a used car or do we accept the fact that Hal only gets out once you know Friday comes along the rest of the week he's homebound at, at the monolith his job and suck it up and just say hey no car for a few months uh and you know i'll take my wife to her work uh and take you just use the car for the weekend i'm i'm down with that but that scares the shit out of me because what happens if there's an emergency what if i need you know what if my wife is in the cities for some reason or another and i need the car because i my hand got lopped off or something like that i i can't say i can pretty much guarantee you that's not going to happen i mean i'm i'm klutzy but i'm not lop off my you know my 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 arm klutzy i mean i i I could probably put something around i could duct tape it for a little while and, and maybe hold off the blood flow for for at least at least a good 10 minutes just enough not to die before the night you know well that's right i can call 911 uh, wait, I can't call 911. I have a phone, but I don't have a car. Okay, so we're okay in that regard. Um, but yeah, don't think I'm going to be cutting my my R off very quickly. But, um, but yeah, my car, my 2006 Subaru Impreza, it is, it is out, it is, it has gone to the, uh, car lot in the sky, if you will. And I am... I mourn it because it's it, it was like my first new car, you know, like up until then, um, you know, I either had my mom's car or I had, um, <clears throat> you know, a car that was built, you know, for me by a, a good friend of the family. And uh, so, yeah, the, it's it's sad. It's very, very sad. I mean, it's been it's been kind of coming, uh, creeping up on me, you know, as far as it. You know, it, it hasn't been in the best condition. It's been kind of making noises and doing weird things that cars probably shouldn't do it. Uh, but I've had it for 13 years. And it's weird because I swear to God, every everything, like, around, like, the first thought I had was, wow, that's as long as I, that's, that's, that, that was how old I was when I had my bar mitzvah. Everything, I used to think everything was linked to movies, but now everything time-wise is linked to my bar mitzvah, like, this has been it's been this mu- it's been this many years that, that this happened since my bar mitzvah. So I've had my car for as long as I've had, you know, since for thirteen years. So my car could have had a bar mitzvah if it wanted to. If 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 it if I don't you know, I don't know what my car's faith is. I mean maybe maybe it's Catholic, so maybe it's confirmed or whatever they do over there. Um so anyway, um and you know, so I might be, I don't know, I might be getting a used car. We're trying to look for one that's maybe under 6000 you know, like maybe $6,000, you know, something of a really small, you know, it'd be a lease, you know, or possibly buying. 
but it'd be in we want the payments to be as small as possible. So if we do get a car, it's probably not going to be one that's like fancy schmancy because honestly, like I said, I only use my car once a week. Um, and that's when I'm not working. So um, otherwise, the rest of the week I'm, I'm homebound and in my big Lebowski uh, bath t bathrobe and just kind of hang, you know walking around aimlessly, you know, and drinking coffee not what like not having any caucasians or white russians of course naturally i'm in recovery but um yeah i was just thinking about that and the thing is i don't even know if i want a fancy schmancy car i mean it'd be nice to have one with, with seat warmers that'd be cool and bluetooth that'd be also cool but uh, you know some of the technology on these cars i i don't know man like i i like technology to a point I trust it to a point, and after that, once it once we get to a certain point, I'm just like, no, nah, I don't, I don't think so. I don't, I don't like it. Like I, I'm an iPhone guy, right? Total iPhone guy. But here's the deal: they've got this whole facial recognition thing going on now, where like it's all facial recognition technology, and I'm just like, fuck that, no way, no fucking way, because I have this fear, this deep-seated fear that what if I gain like 50 pounds, right? I, and, I, and I've talked to people about this and they think I'm crazy because it probably is pretty fucking gonzo. But um, what if I gain 50 pounds and my phone's just like, I mean, naturally it would occur over time. It's not like one in the morning I'm gonna be like, Whoa, bloop. oh shit, I'm 50 pounds heavier now. I mean, it's gonna happen over time. But what if my phone, like I'm trying to like open my phone up and it's just like, nah, I don't think so. I've seen you before. You 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 you've you've done better for yourself before in the past. I, I don't I don't think this is you. You look like a big fat ass. I'm not going to open up for you. And then I don't have a phone if I lop off my my arm. You know? So that, then I'm really fucked, right? Because my phone doesn't recognize me anymore, you know? Um so yeah, I I'm just I don't know. I the whole fingerprint thing also makes me nervous because like I mean, that I, 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 I trust a little bit more, but, like, you know, technology can be a very, very, uh, I don't know. It can be very twitchy and, and nervous, and it can do things that you don't want it to do. And, like, what if it one day just doesn't recognize my fingers, my fingerprints? What if it just, like, does not compute, does not compute? You know, what, ha what happens then? I'm fucked. Again, but um, I guess um, <laughs> I'm working up to something, and um, I've been having I as I mentioned I I went to my my therapist yesterday, um, and it wasn't, it, you know, it, I'm suffering from something that is an uh. uh a real thing uh, it's called gender dysphoria you know and um, the thing is um, a lot of people who are transgender suffer from it or, or gender queer suffer from it um, it's that fear that you know the gender that you that's been assigned to you is not what you believe it, you know what you believe it should be I mean it's it's basically like you're in you're you're somebody you're in the wrong body and you and it's like a depression that comes with that and um i've always i've never really adhered to the guy codes i've always been much more of a girlfriend than i have a, you know a, a, a boyfriend my wife handles all the the masculine stuff and you know that 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 and that, that doesn't necessarily mean anything but i feel girly I feel girly sometimes I feel like a girl and I don't know why but like I, you know I, I have this voice I that never went away and I feel really I feel like a woman a lot of the time and the thing is sometimes I feel like a guy I mean here's the thing I don't know what I want and the thing is I I I had a, a mini panic episode, like an anxiety issue, and the thing is, like, <laughs> um, 
I lied to my wife and told her that I was having anxiety because of the dogs and that I needed to make an emergency session with my, my therapist. Um, and eventually she was like, well, I'm, I'm in bad shape too because I lost the dogs. Why do you, you know, why do you get to leave work early and go to your therapist? You know, and she goes, and I, and I finally had to break it to her and to say, hey, you know what? I'm, sen I, I'm suffering from gender dysphoria. And the thing is, my wife didn't get it. She thought, she thought it was some new age, her words, new agey uh, bullshit or something. Yeah, the new agey was definitely in there. I don't know about the bullshit, but, you know, she, she just doesn't get it. You know, and it's, and people have hurt themselves over this, this kind of dysphoria because they don't know what's going on and they, and they, and they, or they do know what's going on and they just don't know how to express it. And if you, if you are experiencing gender dysphoria, it's, it's, you're not alone. I mean, I'm a mar I'm a, I'm a married man happily, but I am not comfortable in my own skin a lot of the times I sometimes feel like a woman and I, it is it is what I it is it's my cross to bear and I, my wife was more angry that I lied to her but the thing is I'm not I wouldn't consider it lying I'd consider it protecting her from the truth because I don't want to hurt her I don't want to hurt my wife because I don't know what I am or what I want to be or who I want to be. You know, it's not a matter of, like, I mean, here's the thing. You know, people who are transgender, some keep their genitalia. Others, they have complete sexual reassignment surgery, you know, and they take it. Take, you know, the hormone uh, reducement therapy, um, hormone, I think it's hormone reduction, I don't know, it's HRT is the, the, the acronym for it, but um, I probably should be more re well researched with it, but, um, you know, when I originally came out as being bisexual, I did not come out as bisexual to my wife, I came out as pansexual, and my wife also did not understand that, and she thought it was just another catchy, new agey phrase that I'm using. And I said, and if we're going to get down to business and I'm not throwing my wife under the bus, I'm not doing that at all because, I mean, it's a lot. It's a lot for somebody to take, especially a spouse. You know, and she, she was, you know, I just said, well, would it be easier for you to, to, to chew on if I just said I was bisexual? And she goes, yeah, I would. And I said, well, fine, then I'll, I'm bisexual. I'm bisexual. This is nothing new. I mean, you guys, everybody that's been listening to this from the get-go knows that I'm bisexual. I like dudes and I like women. I And I'm completely mono, <clears throat> uh, mononymous. And um, I wouldn't do, I would not intentionally do anything to jeopardize my, my marriage. I love my wife. I do. But I also need some level of understanding you know, like, and I guess what really angers me and makes me sad is the fact that I, I, I give her these terms that she doesn't understand that are absolutely, completely real. And instead of, you know, you know, putzing on her phone in the, in the, at night, she could be researching this to better understand what I'm going through because it's a lot. It's a lot. And, you know, people might say, oh, you're brave for talking about this. No, I'm not brave. It's just I needed to get this out. And the truth hurts. It's not always easy. And you know what? It's, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to, what to think. It's, and this is my cross to bear at this point, even though I'm Jewish. Maybe it's my star to bear. I don't know. But pansexuality is real. Okay, if you know, if anybody tells you that it's not real or that you think you're just full of shit, fuck that. I'm not gonna say fuck them because if I say that, that means I'm saying to my wife, fuck her, and that's not fair to her because, like I said, she's doing her best. 
She really is. Although, like I said, her doing some research would probably help the situation a little bit more. But it is what it is. And, you know, like, I don't know. I just... I don't know. And uh, I guess time will tell. And uh, it's hard. It's hard to, to not know why you're the way you are. You know, it's hard to fathom why things can't just be easy. You know, why can't you be gay? Why can't you be straight? Why are you in the middle? Why are you, you know, why are you this or why are you that? It doesn't matter. The why does, you know, why am I an addict? My, my mom still asks, you know, she still doesn't understand. And the thing is, I've, I've said to her, Mom, I don't understand. I don't understand why I'm an, I'm an addict, you know? And what really pisses me off about my mom, okay, time for mom bashing time. Daily, your weekly bash, mom bashing uh, uh, episode. Um, like, for there was a period of time where I thought I was gay. There it is. It's out there. And, and or, you know, and then I, and I told her that, and she said I was confused, and, like, I just, you know, like, I've done things with, with men, in, you know, obviously before I got married, you know, and, again, that's the past. It's in the past. But what really confuses me is why do, why do I remember the things that I did with those equal, you know, those people, you know, that were my age, and they've somehow blocked it out like it didn't happen. Like, I knew from the, from the early on I was different, you know, and the thing is, I would like to think my, my mom would know that I was different because she knew about a lot of the stuff that I was, I was doing, but she, again, I, I was confused and I didn't know, well, I did know. You know, and I, it turns out I do like women, you know, and I, I like men too, and that's okay. It's it's okay. You know, it really is. I mean, like I said, I'm completely monogamous. I would not do anything, as I've said a gazillion times, to that I would do anything to jeopardize my marriage or, you know, I would never cheat, you know. With that being said, there's sometimes I wonder if... I, you know, could have just, I don't know, if I had taken more time to figure myself out before I jumped into the dating, you know, jumped into the whole married life, you know, like, not married life, but, you know, this, 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 the life that I have. I mean, I wonder what, if I had just taken more time to figure out myself, but, you know, that's just the way things are. That's the way you gotta, you know, you know, uh, go big or go home. Can't win if you don't play, you know? Um, so here I am, a happily married man. Not sure where he fits on the spectrum as far as, you know, ACDC, you know, you know, uh, you know, as, as you know, I know I'm bisexual. That that that's that's an absolute certainty, but the whole gender dysphoria, it's a real thing, and I'm struggling with it. And I'm not gonna do anything bad to myself because honestly, like we've talked about the whole suicide thing. Like I just, I I don't think I could, I I couldn't get. I don't think I could get myself there. It makes it sound like I'm like trying to achieve an orgasm, but I just don't think I could get myself to kill myself. I, 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 I couldn't. And I don't think I, I ever, you know, I, it would just be too much. I couldn't do that to my family and I couldn't do that to myself because I've got a lot of life left to live. And it's a confused life and sometimes it can be unpleasant to, to not know things. But, <clears throat> as usual, I mean, I, you just, you got to play things as they lay, you know, and uh, I'm going to start going back to my therapist because I love talking with you guys and I'm still going to continue doing 
podcasts and episodes because honestly that's my passion that's my it, it it's it's what i do now it's what i love i love talking to you guys but i gotta figure things out and it's not gonna it's gonna have to happen you know one day at a time Yes.